All right, welcome back again. This is Tim Baldridge, and we're going to continue talking about tabling in Odin today. And uh, like I said, I'm really excited about this. Uh, so let's uh, let's dive right into it. Uh, this is going to be pretty hard to understand unless you've watched the other tutorial. And even if you've watched the other tutorial, it may not make a whole lot of sense either. But um, you know, uh, we'll I'll try to explain the best I can and maybe stare at the the code a little bit um, until you understand it. Okay, so here we go. Um, we start off with the definition of a table entry. It's a protocol. Uh, this is for a given rule. Um, a, a given rule will have one of these table entries uh, if we've calculated any table results for it. Um, completed uh, is triggered to say we have processed this rule. We have processed all of the um, uh, results of this rule and we're we, we, we have reached that fixed set, so to speak. Um, I should also mention here that there's probably some edge cases in this that I have not covered. Um, so I'm going to continue testing and improving this code. Um, it's something I've done on and off uh, for a couple weeks. So I'm sure there's some bugs, uh, but you know we can probably at least learn something from here. right? Okay, the results uh, gets all the results of the table. Um, uh, all of the results we found. Uh, suspended... Uh, gets the list of suspended rules. So rules that we were calculating and we need to pause for now. Um, add a result says, hey, we found a result, let's add it to the table. Um, and uh, add, adding a result, uh, yeah, so it adds the results to the table. So then suspend says, okay, this is a function um, uh, this is a transducer basically that was running. Um, I've done all the work I can for now. We need to suspend it. Um, add scene, on the other hand, um, it says for a given clause, a given subpart of the rule chain, um, we are going to take that scene variable and we, this is a, a clause that we've seen, right? So we're going to go and we're going to put it off in a um, specific, uh, uh, we're going to often remember that. Uh, that so we don't have to process we, we won't process that 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 result set again all right and then uh, complete um, uh, completes uh, clears out some data and it's kind of what we do when we're, we're all done with the, the table entry okay so then suspended uh, entry is just a, a holder for some data and uh, we'll this is kind of just bookkeeping stuff here we store our uh, variables in volatile mutable uh, because we won't have this is this code will not be multi-threaded um, and it'll be very hard to make it so um, but you know we'll, we'll, we'll maybe look into that later okay um, uh, and then we have building uh, we'll take a look at that all right so so the, the first thing here is make key so make key says given an environment um, and a list of args uh, we are basically going to make that key we talked about in the previous uh, t t tutorial. So uh, let's, let's see if we can execute that uh, real quick. Make key on an empty environment. Um, so given um, the variables A, B, and C, and we have an empty environment of... Um, uh, sorry, and we have uh, an empty environment. We just get this, the same args out. If, however, one of these was an LVAR, um, we get that slot. So as a slot, we're using the LVAR class. Um, there may be a better way to do that. Um, but uh, this basically says A, B, and we don't know what what the third thing is, right? It could be bound to anything. Um, and this walks it as well. So you can pass in an LVAR like this, say L is 42, and then L, oops, uh, L here, and what we get out is A42 and an LVAR, right? So it's just a way of creating a key given a list of arguments and an environment, right? Um, and then, uh, let's see here, uh, unify row is going to, given two vectors, it will unify them together. So if we have a key like this, right, we have A, B, and LVAR, and we have another row, which is A, B, and 1, it'll basically item per item. So if we have you know, A, B, and 
uh, four, and we we call unify row with uh, a, b, uh, we'll, we'll say um, x, y, and and uh, four. This would unify with a being bound to x, b being bound to y, and the two fours unified together. So it's just a way of doing a positional based unification on two vectors um, or, or two you know sequences. It doesn't have to be a vector. It could be any collection that supports nth. So we basically do that by calling reduce kv um, and getting the index and you know unifying positionally each thing. Okay, so emit results. Um, given a result set, um, what we're basically going to do is go over this result set, which is a set of rows, and then we're just going to unify each one of them, right? So if we have a set of args of A and B, and our result set is uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, then what we get is a stream of... Um, of uh, a stream of output um, environments where A is bound to 1, 3, and 5, and B is bound to 2, 4, and 6. So these are just helper functions um, for binding and that sort of thing. Um, let's see here. Bind args. We'll take a look at, at where that's used in a little bit. Same thing with do reduce. Do reduce is just a way of doing like do seek but with reducibles. And uh, continue suspended. We'll, we'll take a look at that in a little bit. So here is the the, the fun part, right? This is the big uh, tabulate function. Tabulate function. It takes a rule name. This is a unique name for this rule. That's how where we go to store it in a global map of uh, rule results. We then take inner args. Now, these inner args and outer args may look the same, and they may even be the same LVARs. But inside a tabulated rule, we have an empty environment. So if we go back to our uh, test here, if we were to look at the environment outside of calls, we would have a bunch of things in it. Inside here, inside the body of this rule, the only things that we have in our environment are from and to, if they are bound. If they're not bound, then we just have an empty environment. So that's kind of what this uh, inner args, outer args does. It says, for the arguments coming into our function, I mean, sorry, into our rule, uh, what do we bind them? Uh, sorry, inner, we got that flipped around. Inner is inside of the body of this rule, what are our arguments? Outside the body, what are our arguments? And they could look the same, but they're a way of dis, uh, distinguishing between the input, uh, the, the, out, the out, outer part of the rule and the inner part. Um, the part that's tabula uh, tabulated and the part that's not. And then body expression is the uh, transducer we execute when we actually need to execute this rule. Right. So then we also get in outer args, which is the outer part. Um, and it's done this way so that we can apply different outer args to the same um, yeah, instance here of, of the rule. So there's a little bit of partial application. Um, so then XF here is uh, um, uh, the uh, same thing with normal transducer. And then we have this tabulate inner. Okay, so the first thing we do is that whenever we get a new environment in to our uh, tabulated rules, we need to make a key, right? And this will tell us where in the tables to go and look it up. So then we go and look up any pre uh, the, the table result. Um, and the table result is in query CTX tables, rule name, and key. Um, and uh, we just do a get in in this query context. Now what's interesting here is I guess this can be nil, right? Um, it's interesting. What is creating the table? It's been a little bit since I've looked at that code. So um, table entry. Oh, sorry, it's an iflet. There we go. That's what I'm missing. Uh, so iflet table. So if there is a table, and the table has been completed, this is the fast path. So if we have a table and it's completed, then we just emit results. And what we're going to do is just take every result we have, and we're going to take our outer args, and we're just going to create a stream of new results of those two uh, unified together. Right. So this emit results um, 
as you remember, we just get the results in and we just transduce on every result, unifying it and, and outputting it. Okay, so that's a simple uh, result. Now, if it's not completed, um, uh, so let's let's uh, go down to a, um, a little bit simpler one. Let's go down here first. So we don't have a table. Uh, no entry exists for this rule key, so we need to create one. So what we do is we create a new table entry and uh, the status is building and we have empty um, result sets and, and uh, suspended and, and so forth. And then we go and we just insert that into the query context. So if we ever come back across um, this tabulated rule again, um, we will now have a table entry. So we will only ever enter this section at the first time, the first call to the rule um, in, in a chain of, you know, recursive rules. And then we're just output building here. Okay, so what we do then is we just run the body expression, and we call this thing building. And actually, I'm, actually, I'm not actually sure that we use that anywhere else, and I should probably pull that out uh, because we detect if we're building this a different way. Uh, but at any rate, what we do is we just call transduce on the body expression, um, and we have a special reducing function. And what this reducing function does is it kind of intercepts the body. Because what we want to do is every time we get a new item from the body expression, we don't want to emit it yet as a true result. Instead, what we want to do is we want to make a key out of it, make a row, basically, and we want to store that row in our list of results. So that's what we see here. We call the body expression transducer, and our reducing function just adds the results into the table after we turn it into a key. Um, and a lot of this stuff, a lot of these functions are maybe a little bit hard to understand if you don't have a mental model of the way the data is shaped. So, you know, get in here, play around with make key and stuff, and just kind of see how that... Um, how that works with different inputs and outputs. Okay, so we have these inner args, we make a key, uh, good, and we add the results. So now we've added all the child results. And then what we need to do is, um, let's see here, these are on the same level, that's, that's uh, interesting. Okay, so then we call continue suspended. So at some time, well, Let's back up. As we're running this, we will enter this table's results again. When we enter it again, the table will exist, but it will not be completed yet. In which case, we, it says uh, table is not completed, so we must be in a subnode somewhere. So we emit all the results we have in the table so far, then create a suspension and attach it to the table. Right? So we get all the results from the table that have been seen so far. And then um, this suspension uh, is, we create a suspension function. And what the suspension function is, is a list of, it, it's a function that takes additional values and then does something for them, with something with them. So in this case, what this function will do is whenever we get new values, we are going to add them to the values we've seen. And then we're going to emit the results into our transducing function. And the transducing function in this case is the next part of this body. So we've kind of we've kind of taken a sub portion of our rules and uh, wrapped it up in a function and shoved it off somewhere. And then we emit results um, to kick it off. So this is kind of saying, hey, when you get more results, we need to add them to scene and emit the results. And um, when we uh, let's see here, and when we um, and we need to kind of kick it off. So the suspend here, uh, let's see here, suspend just associates in to that function a list of things that we've seen. Okay, so all we've done at that point is run a few results and inserted ourselves as a suspended. Um, clause. All right, so this function is just sitting out there. Okay, so now when we've executed this body, what we have is a list of suspended functions and a list of things that the suspended functions have seen, and we need to call continue suspended. So continue suspended gets kind of fun, right? <laughs> um, 
So uh, we create this emitted um, uh, volatile. And what this, what we basically do, this is our, our main loop, right? So we get in the tables um, for a given rule. We go into the tables and we get all of the suspended rules. Uh, sorry, sorry. We get all of the, um, the keys and their results. Then we also get all the suspended functions and the things they've seen we remove from the results set the things that they've already seen so we don't we don't send it to them again right so what we have now is a list of results that that given suspended function has not yet seen right huh that i think that should actually be true that's funny um huh i'm surprised that that uh that ever completes. I'll have to take a look at that. I believe this should be uh, V reset emitted to true. Um, but at any rate, uh, the result is, is that we continue running this um, until there is nothing left that we've done, right? Um, oh, uh, the, the reason this, this uh, hmm. yeah, that still doesn't make sense to me. At any rate, uh, we recur uh, so, so we emit the, the different results, pass those into that function, and then we recur and we recur and we recur again. So this is the, the part I think we can explain a little better, right? What is really happening here? Well, here, when we, when we have add scene, and then well, add scene has the table. So every time it sees news results, it's going to be inserting into this scene var. Right, this is mutable stuff going on here, and then in addition, every time we emit results, well, what is the lowest level reducing function in this thing? Well, it's this one here, and that adds a new result to the table. Right, so the call goes from here at this call this function to the suspension, which calls emit results, which eventually calls this reducing function, which adds a result to the table and it returns nil, right? So we continue executing that over and over and over again until there's nothing left to do. None of our tables have, our, all of our tables have seen all of the results. And I really think that needs to be true. Um, actually, this is just only ever executing once. That, that's, that's interesting. Yeah, I'll have to debug that. Because um, I think I just haven't hit a situation where that would break yet, but it would break in a very subtle way. Um, at any rate, um, I'll be sure to continue updating this code and you know check the the post log, uh, or sorry, the um, the change log, um, and it'll probably make sense. Okay, so that's that's the result. That that's the basic idea. Let's go back to our tests here and see that. So so what we basically are doing is generating these keys. Um, based upon the input data, so input data from and to and the table name, um, and that will be the the key. And then we're just building up tables of this data um, until we get to the point where we've we don't have any other results to to execute. And we've transformed the body of these rules so that the lowest level reducing function in our transducer pipeline just dumps directly into the table result. And then there's this upper level thing that's watching the table and says, okay, so we executed all these rules and the table didn't change. So now we know we're done. And now what we have left is a vector or an array or a set, actually it's a set of all of the table results we've seen and that's the output. Now, what's interesting, one other thing I'll, I'll uh, mention here is that uh, all of this is stored in the query context. And the query context is a global dynamic var in the unification namespace. Um, and what that allows us to do is that if we have multiple calls uh, to this function in the same, uh, so with query context here, um, we, we, a for query creates a query context, otherwise you can do it on your own. But within the body of that query context creation, um, none of the data is destroyed. So if you call the same rule multiple times at, at multiple different levels or different places of your query, uh, the tabled results are stored there 
um, in that global var. And then when your query finally executes and everything's done, then we release those those resources. Uh, so that paper also discusses that. Um, uh, if you if you want to read it, there's some discussion in there about how long uh, you keep the table results around for. Uh, maybe you keep it around for the life of your program. Maybe you keep it around uh, and flush them out uh, on some other algorithm or the life of a given query. Uh, there's a lot of different um, uh, thoughts about how to go about that, and it really is application specific. So that's that's tabling. Uh, like I said, I'm sure we'll improve it uh, as time goes on. It's it's fun to play with. It's kind of mind bending. Um, this is one of those things where I read the paper, sat down, and and tried to figure it out over a period of a couple of weeks, and it looks like it pretty much works. And at least these little bugs that I'm finding are things that I don't think are are huge and and uh, will show a flaw in the design as much as just edge cases that I, I haven't thought of. So um, that's the uh, tutorial for today. Um, I think we're going to move on in the future to some more optimization techniques. Uh, look at some work I've done with indexing data structures. And then we'll also uh, dig in a little bit to interfacing with Datomic uh, and some other cool things like that spec as well. Um, so uh, we got plenty to go, plenty of uh, stuff to look at on this, and uh, it should be fun. So thank you very much for watching.